Episode 31, take one. And we're back. Click. <laughs> Leave that in, Grayson. <laughs> <laughs> episode 31. Oh, what's up, guys? What's hey, going what's on? going on, man? Not much. It's 31 <laughs> episodes. I know. We're getting close. We're yeah. getting to the point where we're not going to count episodes anymore. We're uh, 70 away. So, uh, 69. 69. Ooh, 69. The, it's the, the, the sexy Can version. Can I tell you that anytime. <laughs> Don't be the guy that hears the number 69 what, and goes, gig- ooh, ooh, or uh, giggles. G- giggity. Don't be Gronkowski. Oh, you have to. You have to. It's it's part of it, man. Nice. It's just another number. Uh, no. It's the best number, though. It's the best number. Outside of 666. Uh, that's weird. Hey, Phil, I'm in the mood for a switch up. I hit the function, hit the rose till I hiccup. I hit the stage and leave with money that say stick up. She picks your perfect, so I told him I'm a flicker. Bill, I'm in the mood for a change up. I leave the city and return with my change up. They got amnesia, don't remember how they played us. They want to knock me down, but somehow I just stay up. Love. Critically and Acclaimed Podcast. I am Tyler here with Brandon and our producer Grayson. What is up, everybody? Episode 31. Yo, what's going on? 31. I'm really excited, guys. I am too. I I'm am too. I'm pumped. So I like doing this podcast with you guys. It's pretty fun. It is pretty fun. For those of you that were like, "Hey, why do you do the podcast?" It's, uh, it's pretty it's fucking fun. Time. Yeah, it's a good time. So the uh, but yeah, so uh, the the draft picks. Yes, how did that, that's how what did we that were talking off? about. <laughs> Which country? In All right, no, so, we're gonna tell. Well, no, we might as well just tell them. So we just had some huge technical difficulties. Yeah, we, we had so some we've done this intro. We, we had to restart, and now we're restarting up. You guys don't know, but this is the second time we've done this intro, and I could see the wheels turning in Tyler's head because he was like. I've done this. What did I say the last time? Yeah, and I you're like, remember. oh, I did it so well the first but time. what it was was, what, what I meant to say was. What had happened was. <laughs> you guys don't know me. <laughs> we, finished our, uh, we finished our draft picks for our fantasy through, the, uh, through the Olympics. W- and Which country got the number one draft pick? Canada. Canada. Well, fucking Canada. Fuck, no. They shouldn't have even been in the thing. I thought they were too good of a country. But uh, and they and they were they they end up they that, so. snuck in for the number one pick on the last day. Um, it was really exciting. So you had Spain. Would you end up sixth? I think right. You ended up sixth, and I had Croatia, and I ended up ninth yeah. out of eleven teams. Uh, but uh, I know, and I and I mentioned this to a buddy of mine, Craig. Uh, shout out to Craig, just in case he's listening to the podcast. Not everyone that's on our fantasy football listens Hardly, to the podcast. Yeah, it, shout out Josh. Yeah, no. Listens. Shout out Josh the Republican. I yeah. know he, I know he's going to be listening. Yeah. Okay, so uh, it was great because I had four people texting me back and forth during the last female sprint race. And did, was that a money? I don't know that that was a money time for that. Crazy. That's actually. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it was the gold medal race. Oh, I thought maybe he was doing it every time you heard gold medal. I was like, oh, that's great. Gold medal race. A little late, but we'll work on it. Okay, so <laughs> uh, so there's this gold medal race. It's the ladies' sprint gold medal. Like, and there, it's just two girls, right? They, they race, so the semifinals go, and Canada wins. And so they're in the, the finals. And I'm, we're sitting there and we're looking and Brazil's in the finals with America and volleyball and Brazil's got a boxing like gold medal match coming up and New Zealand, the person with New Zealand is actually the number one seed at the point, but it doesn't look like they're going to get another medal. So they're, they're trying to track down like if they're still going to be able to hold on. And then out of nowhere, this Canadian lady sprint by the last name of Mitchell wins a gold medal and it actually thrusts Canada up to number one. But wait, Brazil's got a couple gold medal matches later that night, like midnight and one, one of them's against our U S volleyball team. And if he wins one of them, he gets number one. So like people are talking and they're watching cycling and, and they're watching Olympic boxing. And like, I just felt like 
maybe I did something right as the commissioner <laughs> of this league because well, everybody seems super involved with it. It was a, it was really fun. I never really watched any events cause I don't have like cable or anything. So I don't have NBC. I was just kind of watching it on my phone and like seeing what matches were coming up and stuff. And that was just fun in general. So like, it was almost like playing fantasy. Like I, like I was, I was Spain it was fantasy yeah, Olympics. Right. And I you were Spain. Spain. Uh, Canada ended up with the number one, uh, Brazil, for everyone should know because this was a really big match. Uh, the Americans ended up with the most gold and the most total medals, uh, thanks in part to the last day the women's in, or the women's basketball won gold big over Japan, nice. and then uh, there was a women's uh, cycler in a in what's called an omnium race, which is a four part race, which is. Really, really cool. It's one of those ridiculous no, bike races. it was crazy. And yeah. there was a huge wreck, and there was a lot of like injuries. Like it was, it, it was, it was crazy. Like, but she ended up getting gold. These, these are athletes that are probably more athletic and like than most of the people on the planet. And it's just like such an unknown sport. Like so, going into the last day of the Olympics, we were down by two gold. The U.S. was, and so the women won the basketball and put us to one down. Nice. Yeah. And then this this woman won the Omnium race. And so we got to 38. We were tied with China. And there was three events that were still gold medal type events for these countries. There was a boxing match for the Americans. There was a boxing match for the Chinese. And they were both gold medal matches. And then there was the women's volleyball team playing Brazil's uh, volleyball team. And this could have catapulted... Uh, the, the the guy that was representing Brazil to the number one seed. Um, so I have to believe that he was rooting kind of for Brazil. Uh, it wasn't even a contest. The women like went in there, they beat them three straight sets, and it was like slaughter. It was so funny listening to the announcers try to make it seem like it was closer than it really was. I don't know if you guys have ever like watched any sports where they like yeah they're trying you know, to it's like they're, they're it's, 30, it's it thirty four to seven and and they're like you know in a football game and they're like you know if they were to score here that would give them a a real opportunity it's to kinda, get back into this game I mean and you're it, like it's over man it's kind of like I mean even like a Super Bowl uh, that's you know you could tell that the one team showed up to play and the other one didn't even like last year like yeah. it's the, like they kept, we, they're, they're we like knew, well if the Chiefs were to score here we knew in the second like at the end of the second like quarter like it, at halftime yeah the Chiefs probably weren't going to win this game like they yeah. were they were playing like shit and like they had no really no chance like no that, absolutely it would have took another Mahomes miracle to win that game but, so but they always was like all the way up to like halfway through the fourth they were like, oh, the Chiefs might get a chance if they could score here and drop off a couple of other ones. So the, the U.S. women's volleyball team gets the gold and puts us over the top. We're over China, but there's two boxing matches left. Uh, China and America actually both lost their, their gold medal matches, so we ended up with 39. So go U.S. So does that mean like the U.S. won the Olympics? Well, yeah, no, of course that's what it means. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly, yes, what, that's it, that's exactly, exactly what it means. What it means. Hey, what I did see something super interesting, though, um, and it was, a, uh, it was a fencer that didn't actually make it onto the Olympic team because the event that she thought she would use to get into it uh, got canceled because of COVID or, or something to that fact. But she was showing how much countries pay their athletes for gold, silver, mm-hmm. and bronze medals. Yeah. In America, it's like thirty-seven thousand for gold, twenty-four thousand for silver, and fifteen thousand for bronze. No, some of these other countries, million dollars. And some of those other countries, like Indonesia, if you win a gold medal, it's like three hundred seventy-three grand. Dang. It's crazy. And well, so, I think that like with Russia, I'm pretty sure that if you win a gold medal with them, it's like a million bucks. Like you get a million dollars. So I don't understand the disparity there. Because, like, we're America, and maybe it's because we do win the Olympics a lot, but this yeah. one was super close. I mean, think about how many, like, uh, how many medals Indonesia wins in compared to how many medals the United States wins. I know, but we just have, we have so much money. But the, I know, we but, spend but also, so much money training these people. Like, like, we, we sponsor, and like, there's just, there's so much that's, money to that's be the, had the in, this, in this area, the but the athletes is, get nothing. No, the, here's the difference, though. Indonesia, that guy is not going to sign a deal with Nike because he's the best fucking No, but he's going to come runner. back a hero. Like, that guy, like right. the Indonesian gold medalist for the rings or whatever, 
he's he like they're gonna throw a parade for him. Yes, for and him. he's gonna get paid three hundred seventy five thousand. Yeah. Now the guy who for America who won like the girl who won uh, uh, gold for the U.S. in the in the hundred meter or whatever it is. Uh, I don't remember what it was. One of the running ones. I don't remember which one it was, but uh, maybe it's the two hundred meter. But uh, she's gonna come back. She's gonna sign a deal with Nike. That's probably gonna be like a like a four year, like five hundred six hundred thousand dollar contract. And she's gonna sign a deal with uh, with some other company as well. That's promoting you know that uh, like you know whatever subway subway something like that and like subway, you know that's going to do another to do like another 500 grand yeah. you know over two years yeah no they're they're going to so come back they're going to they're, they're going to they're going to so get what their you're money. Saying, suggesting is it's not the body of the work it's the endorsements it's capitalism at its finest right. yes it's, it's at the end of the day it's all about can you sell and stuff? i think mm-hmm. i think like uh countries get a portion of money from the olympic committee and that's what they kind of divvy out, like to the players and stuff with the yeah. with the gold medals. Well, so they it ain't like the United States is actually like the government is paying players. It's like through the Olympic Committee, uh, the United States Olympic Committee, and the United States Olympic like chair or whatever it is that are actually playing the players, I'm not just, the government. I can't help but think though, whenever you see the Americans like up against like Belarus or you know Ghana or something like that. And they're forking out this kind of money for the gold medal. These people, that's like life changing money to them. But for like, well, think about say, this. Say, say half to sixty percent of our Olympians, that money might just go straight to charity because they don't give a shit. No, and so See, like, that's that's really wrong because like Olympians, it actually cost them like American Olympians. The argument that it was there. It costs them more to live because they don't get their stuff paid for like a lot of times. So like um, they don't have like housing and stuff like that where some of these other guys like if you're if you make up the Olympics, if you're qualifying or if they know you're going to qualify like they're paying for your your whole thing, like you're paying for your training and everything. And so it's like they don't really they don't really have a lot of other expenses where U.S. athletes do have those. expenses. I just can't help but think that. There are some Olympians out there from other countries that, like, if you are if you ever go, man, the American just seemed like he was, like, kind of lackluster. And this other one was, like, pouring his heart into the event, like, and had a mental breakdown if he lost. It's because the money that he is gambling or playing for is life-changing. And really, the Americans playing for the gold medal. They make more money on the on the circuit, yeah. You know, whatever track and field circuit or yeah, the, whatever. The promotional they're, they're, stuff. This, this is this is with not, their Adidas deal this is or their not Nike's deal. Financially strapping them or financially dooming them, or the other, you know, the other fifteen hundred meter from Lithuania. Like he's like, if I win this, like my family gets to eat for an entire year, you know, whatever. I, I apologize to Lithuania, yeah, but, no, but either, either way, saying. but it's you like, understand what I'm saying. He, so no, it definitely it uh, the money means more to them for, because of the bigger chunk that they're getting, where the Americans are making the money off the. Yeah. And I'm sure that these guys probably have some kind of endorsement deal too in their home countries. I don't know if they'd be like the same um, level and pay as what the United States guys get. Also, we were wrong in the last uh, podcast about Simone Biles. She came back, did the balance bar, and got a bronze. I was really proud of it. You know that that's like her main sport. Yeah, like that's like her main thing. I think that her dismount is the move that's named not, after her. The not, Biles. Nothing but love for Simone Biles. Glad she came back. Glad she was able to compete uh, strong enough to be on a platform. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, no, you I know, thought it was great. Did you see the video? She talked about her aunt had passed away yes and that's why she was kind of in in a funk no it sounds it sounds like it was like a bunch of stuff she, compounding she also uh um she actually was going and working out every day at a private gym that she'd rented they like rented out the gym for her in tokyo or she was i don't know if they rented it out like but it was private she's like you couldn't get cameras in and they had some cameras of her doing stuff, and she was not doing good. And like, because it was like a test gym where, like, if you fell off your dismount, like you were just gonna, it was gonna land on a bunch of foam, yeah. And it was, and you weren't gonna be hurt. It wasn't like just like the like yeah. it is there where it's like if you fall, you're gonna bust. Yeah, your she face. she went there to contemplate and work some shit out, and and she was struggling. Yeah, and like and uh, and she would. Uh, I think she did the balance beam because she is just so good at it that she was able to do that. And she actually had a tweak and downgrade her performance. Like uh, um, she probably could have won even a higher medal if she wouldn't have changed her routine. Yeah. She, she made a, she made an easier routine. She made it. Easier. She wasn't right. 
Like and so, so the, I think that they just knock, goes, they that, knock points off of you if, when you do that. Yeah, I know you, they do. Well, no, I mean she had a simpler routine. Their yeah. te- te- technical difficulty is part of their their scoring. Yeah. But here's the deal: uh, Simone da- Biles, uh, not ready to compete, third best gymnast on the balance beam in the entire <laughs> right. world. Yeah, and you could uh, you could argue that there's like probably I don't know four thousand to twelve thousand gymnasts that can't say that. That are all like right. with with Olympic there, aspirations. There, there's, so, there's, how many gymnasts wish they were Simone Biles? Yeah, well, every gymnast wishes yes. they were Simone Biles so, at this point. Hey, what are, what's the deal with? Because uh, the United States basketball team they won uh, gold, uh, Both men's, of them. Men, men, men and women. women's. But what was the deal with? Uh, did you see that video where they were? Uh, it was like an Instagram video. I, don't, I think it was uh, uh, Draymond Green was doing it, and uh, Kevin Durant was on there. And, and they yeah, were, he said shit talking. He was I had like, to do some shit talking to, to Braun, and they were like, "Hey Braun, hey Braun, we won the gold." They're like, they're like talking to like like talking shit to LeBron, and I just like I didn't know what that like. I know that they don't really like I, I each other, right? I, like, I didn't. That a thing? I didn't. No, I don't think so. I, thought I mean, they didn't. I, I don't know. Maybe they don't. It, well, Draymond, Draymond's hard to get along with, but uh, for those of you that don't know, Draymond. Green is the enforcer. He was a, he came from Michigan State. He was in the uh, he was on the Warriors team that won all those championships still like, is. against LeBron. He's still on that Warriors team, but he's like an enforcer type. Like yeah. dude gets assists, really rebound. Good. He's a scrappy player. Doesn't score a lot, but he just he's, he's, he's very a good blue, defensive player. He's a blue collar NBA. He player. reminds me of a uh, Rasheed Wallace back in the day in, uh, yeah, and Ben she, Wallace. She she'd at least got some points. Ben Wallace is probably a better. And but like, you Draymond, remember, do you remember that Detroit Pistons yeah, team yeah, that beat the, the Lakers a yeah, couple times? Yeah, like, that was they they like that's the way that he remind he plays like those guys. But played. Draymond, uh, wouldn't well, that make sense because he's from Michigan State, right? Yeah, like so. Maybe, I, he I, was probably I, in I'm college. A, I'm a that, Spartan fan. I'm an yeah. Izzo fan. So, uh, but Draymond Green is he's great. The the best thing that I watched was Draymond Green, who is a guard size, playing center against Rudy Gobert, which is a seven foot titan of a man for yeah. France, and going toe to toe and like pushing up on him, like it's it was so funny. We've got seven footers on the team, and they went nah. Put Draymond on him. That'll piss him off. Like <laughs> and it, it, it worked. It worked. Grudy yeah. was completely out of his element, and so uh, kudos to the men's basketball team. Double kudos to the women's basketball team because they weren't picked to win. They, I don't think. Wait, women's? Yeah. Oh no, they absolutely oh, they were? were. No, I yeah. thought there was a team. I, I, I say double kudos more. because no one, no one seems to give them the kudos they're due. This is like their ninth straight gold medal, and like they haven't lost in like I don't know. Like oh, they 20, haven't. They don't twenty eight years so. or something. Oh, yeah, that's probably what they it don't is. lose. They go undefeated every every year, every Olympics. They come up and it's like watching the dream team from ninety two. Like it's just like the average margin of victory is like twenty. And <laughs> they just smoke everybody. That they, makes they sense. They do. They 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 took it to Japan in the gold medal match. So, uh, so that was the Olympics. Go America. Go Croatia. Ninth place. Go Spain. Sixth place. Uh, but, hey, while we're talking about basketball, real quick, um, what do you think about the Lakers souping up and getting everybody? You say souping up. Yeah, they went and got a bunch of. They went and got a bunch of guys. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> so. You this, you're a LeBron fan. Yes, no, I am a LeBron fan. So, this is the this is Anthony Davis and the Dream Team from 2016. <laughs> like so, this is that is what they've got. They've got oh yeah yeah it is, no yeah. they've they've got like three or four years or guys that are like on the downhill of their the pinnacle of their career, like Russell Westbrook. And, uh, is Russell Westbrook on the downhill? He almost yes. averaged a triple double no, uh, uh, like uh, last no, no, year. No, 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 no. There was a there was a year that he had like fifty triple doubles in a year, and he had like an MVP season. That was like three or four Dude, years. He ago. He killed it last year with the Wizards. Like he went him and Bradley Beal when they were on the when they got traded the Wizards, they almost took the Wizards. It was a terrible team, and what are the fucking playoffs on the East? Like I think Russell Westbrook is a steal. Like, Russell Westbrook being the second best player on a team that almost played the, made the playoffs in the Eastern Conference of the NBA. <laughs> He was it's, the best player. Beal Bradley, was second. Bradley Beal is the best player. But, it, you know, know, we could argue that. Yeah. Okay, so the Lakers have retooled. They are in a lot of trouble because they've got like five players and no money. So they they, they were like going to have to get a bunch of people from the veteran midterm. They got a couple big guys too. Who, they, who all did they get? 
Who's well, the big guy they got? They got Dwight Howard back. Yeah, they got again. Dwight Howard back. They got and they got Anthony Davis. Uh, who was the other guy? I don't remember. They did. They did sign one another center. Yeah, but uh, but I can't remember who it is. So it there, sucks there, we lost Alex Caruso. That that's the worst. There's gonna the Bulls, be there's but. gonna be six or seven like Lakers that you're gonna know their name. And then there's Carmelo be, Anthony plays for Lakers. There's I think gonna that's be hilarious. eight people for the Lakers that you're like, who's that guy? Come on, it's Carmelo Anthony, LeBron, uh, Westbrook. And Dwight Howard and Anthony Davis, Davis. all of the Anthony same Davis team. and the MVPs of 2013 to 2016. I think Carmel, this is I, still hey, a hey, good team. Hey, I I think they'll win some this, games. They'll this, win a lot of this games. This actually reminds me of a Lakers team that didn't win the championship when they went and got Gary Payton and Carlo, Carl Malone. Oh, they they, they, they remember lost that? The, they lost to the uh, they went and got Carl Malone and Gary Payton and tried to make this this exact team. Where it was just really good. Was that guys the last that were, year that they with Shaq that they they yeah. lost they lost again to Detroit? Yeah, they lost uh, they lost two back to know. back to I, Detroit. I don't know who they lost to. It was years ago, but it was that, it's just it reminds me of that team because it's just yeah. like a it bunch of guys. Is. You're hoping that Kobe these guys all come together and like was it Steve Nash on that team too? No, it was Steve Nash, no. Carl Malone, no Derek Fisher. D- oh, D- Fish okay, that's was right. Their, was yeah, it was Fisher. Guard. But Nash either, was there later. Either, either way, Nash, Nash was never a Laker. Wasn't yeah, he? he was with Kobe back at the end there. He was. Yeah. Okay. Well, either way. Uh, so speaking of Olympians and basketball and people at the height of their athletic prowess, I'm pretty sure I'll have to look that up. I, I believe. Yeah, Steve Nash was never a Laker. Anyway, <laughs> I just was going to let you have it. Uh, but people with the peak of their athletic prowess, people that go out there and get things done. Speaking of those people, Tyler, you did some fishing this week. Yeah, I went to Niangua, and the coolest thing about it was is I got to go with Marcus. You got to go with your brother. Yeah, and uh, we just haven't been out fishing in a, quite a while, but it was awesome, dude. I probably caught, like, I would say anywhere from, like, 20 to 30 fish. Like, you have uh, pictures? Of any of them, um, I got one. Yeah, you have one picture and, uh, uh, of thirty fish. It was the biggest one. It was about eight inches. Like it was about eight to nine inches. It's the one so. he showed you from last week. He's, the, he's no, got, it's a different type. He's got a one time. picture. <laughs> there the there was like we were catching. Uh, for one, I don't just like sit there and take pictures. Like that's like like I'm fishing. Like if I was if I was taking pictures all the time, I would never catch any fish. So like I'm uh, arguing the the idea that maybe you don't catch fish. <laughs> no, that's just not You're true. You're proving my point. Like that's just uh, he doesn't not have true. pictures because he's always so, fishing. No, no, no. no. So take, so you went and fished with your brother. You had a hell of a fishing trip, and it, it was a lot like of fun. You, we caught a lot of fish, and uh, the they were uh, we were catching a lot because we were fishing in the Niangua. We were I was uh, it was Marcus's first time fly fishing. Kind of got him you know going on that, learning how to fly fish. Um, I caught, uh, there, we caught a bunch of like little perch, like I'm talking like two or three inch, like that's like what the kind of fish we were catching. Oh, okay. And then we, uh, every once in a while, I probably caught like 10 to 15, like small mouth. And the biggest one that I caught was like probably anywhere from eight to nine inches. So these were all like little babies. And, uh, Mark, uh, I mean, small mouth, eight to nine inches is, is decent, that a decent size. size fish. And, uh, for the, especially for the Niangua, um, a big one there is like 15 to 16. Like that's a really good yeah. one. Did Marcus get a bigger fish than he you? He got like a, a ten to eleven, yeah, like ten to eleven, maybe even a twelve inch smallie, and it was it was about two to three inches long. I didn't know Marcus knew how to fly fish. He didn't, and uh, it was so <laughs> funny. It was so funny because he was uh, he was doing his casting and stuff, and he cast it out there, and he's like, man, he's like, I wanted to get a little bit further, and I was like, don't worry about it, man, just go ahead and fish that, just go ahead and strip it back in, and I was like, you never know, you you might get one on that, like. And uh, sure enough, dude, he's stripping it in and he hooks, hooks that big one. And he's like, when he hooks it, he's like, holy shit. He's like, this is a good one, man. He's like, get the net. And he's like, oh, I need the net. And I was like, it ain't that big, but I'll we'll go get it. But uh, we went to take a picture of it, and uh, uh, it was uh, big enough. It kind of uh, jumped out of his hand, you know. It was like, and uh, so we didn't get the picture. But but uh, but it was it was a lot of fun. I'm glad we got to go. So then and, uh, and it was. Uh, Man, I I am hooked on fishing, dude. I just can't get enough. That of was it. that was like, such yeah, a good that pun. That's a pun, right? That is I such really a good am. Pun. I really am. I just like I am so. It's not stoked. a dad joke. It's, it's a rad uh, joke. And one of the things you know that I'm really liking about it is I just like getting out. I've just been really digging getting out and getting outside and like getting out on the water and get just a having color a good time. on your skin. Yeah, getting the vitamin D going. You know. 
And uh, it was just like we just waded through the river. So it was just like we kind of just like we're like, you know, kind of just walking through water all day. And uh, in uh you see anybody else out on the on the river? Yeah, there's three. Uh, I think it was two or three different groups of people came through there. Uh, uh, one old boy, he had this gigantic fl- uh, like lure. He was just conventional fishing, and he had this like gigantic lure that it threw in, and it was like a topwater spin bait, and it was just like roaring through the water, just ripping through the water, and he caught a good size smallmouth on it, and I was just like, I just can't believe. That they bit on something that big. And, dude, I have been fishing for smallmouth. Like, it was the first thing I learned how to fly fish on when I was, like, 16 years old. That's what I was fish for was smallmouth all the time. And I just realized that I never knew how to fish for them. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, like, I actually did some research, figured it out, caught a ton. And some of the more big, like, some of the biggest ones I've caught, I've caught a few bigger. But they were completely by accident. And um, I've been doing even more research, and I'm going to get uh, kind of re-gear up, and I'm going to go back, and I'm, I'm looking for that, like, 16 to, to 20-inch Can you please take a picture? Smally. If I get a 15 to 20-inch, you better believe I'm taking a picture of that I guy. I would like for you to I got a picture of the, ni- of the biggest one that I caught. I took a picture of it. I was like, this is the biggest one I'm going to catch today. So we, we, Grayson, you weren't here, but I came over, and we watched a couple fishing videos, and I watched, like, this guy, like, fish out of some random creek and pull out like this monster right. this monster that was like longer than my forearm yeah and like twice as no, thick i seen this and video like, too. I, yes and i'm sitting there going like what well, what's he doing that, that tyler's uh, not doing like i'll right? tell you the difference location location, location location like i just don't have those big ass fish like well i think i'd go there <laughs> i think i don't know where he was at but yeah he was uh uh, he, it was it was a monster. I don't remember. Smallmouth is a lot of but, fun to fish for. Like it's some of the best around here. It's the most fun I think that dude, you can they, fish for. It is. It's a lot of fun. Like I really like it. And apparently, there's a whole community around here uh, uh, that that fly fishes for smallmouth. You should go out to some and, of the lakes if you uh, want to catch some you big should, ones. You should. I'm actually. I want to go to some other rivers. I want to go down to James River. I hear mm-hmm. they have some good ones there. And then uh, I'm going to hit up a couple others. And here's the thing. This is something. The Niagara River is like my river. It's the one I grew up on, right? And one of the things that I'm going to plan is I think next year, next summer, I'm going to try and I'm going to start. It, the Niagara River starts in Marshfield. And I'm going to um, canoe all the way to the end of it, um, which is Osage Beach. And I'll end up at Osage Beach. And uh, it's about, uh, I think it's about like a hundred and some miles. What? On the Niangua. And it should take me about five days. I think I can do it in about five days. Five to six. I, I have to so look you're and see. You're just gonna load load a canoe with your camping gear. Probably and just a find ra- a spot. Pro- probably yeah. a uh, probably a raft. Shut your phone off, motherfucker. I am so uh, sorry. God damn it, you son of a bitch. Oh uh, man. No, that I'm just is kidding. one demerit. You yes, get, yes. Give I'm, me a demerit. I'm just I'm just kidding, Brandon. Go fuck yourself. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> No, but anyway, yes, I, w- I want to get a raft, and I want to... Oh, shit, my microphone fell down. Go fuck myself. Shit. We are having all sorts it's of technical... Te- this is, so what la- is going last on last week, last week, we had some technical difficulties, and this is not good. Yeah. I'm getting several phone calls, so, so I'm going to cams. step away. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So, uh, but yeah, like, get a raft uh, mm-hmm. and just kind of head down it. I, I can't remember how long. It ain't as long. I've I don't think it's quite 100 take, miles. But. Uh, like, a multiple day. Like, I, I, I don't mind, like, an overnight float, like, uh, a two-day float, but I'd really like to do one of the much longer ones. Would you want, you if you want to do this with me, we could take, like, it Like it might be, like, 10 days, but. I'm down. It would be, it would would be, be an adventure, yeah, I could tell you. Get, like, a, a canoe, like, I, I could definitely. I, I might be able to talk in a couple more folks if you're. Looking to have more. Yeah, sure. I know like, lo- lots of like floating buddies. That is one of the. Yeah, and and there's points that if they uh, if they ever want to bow out, there's points where they could get out at any time. That's what's cool about it is like if there's anything that ever happened, there's just plenty of uh, um, places where you can you know where you can go and and get out. So. No, you talked about fishing the James River. That's where I've done most of my fishing at. Oh like, really? It's it's really. Oh great yeah, you go smallies. floating there a lot, mm-hmm. right? And do you catch a lot of pretty good sized smallies there? Really, and it just depends on where you're I've, at on the. I've river, also heard that the the white bass, the stripers, get up there earlier in the spring, every and that's what I'm kind of interested in every as well. Now, I think I've I've caught maybe one up on the James River. Like it was also crazy. It was over by River Cut. Like on the James River, We're, you're really close to the James River here. Like yes, I know. You can 
drive a couple minutes and you're you're there. I don't know if there's it's any open enough space to do fly fishing. I just do. Oh, I can fishing. fly fish anywhere. Nice. Because like, what, what you can do, you can just park in the river cut parking lot, and the river is running right through it, and you can just walk down to the creek and. Oh, right on. That's where I do most of my fishing. That one big fish that I sh- that I showed you. Yeah. I caught right there off the golf course. Oh, nice. Yeah, like, and anybody can go there. Yeah. Huh. If, if it is on, if it's water, you can go. You can go fish it. That's pretty interesting. We might have to do that here this week or something. Absolutely. It's it, one it, evening. It used to be one of those things like I'd get off work when I was working part time at like three in the afternoon. I would just like drive out there and then fish till like sun started to set and then I'd go home. I may have to do that. Like that well, sounds fun. I apologize for that, guys. Yeah. I'm back. Life happens. But uh, but yeah. So like I'm I'm trying to look and see how long the Niagara uh, Niagara River is. I think this is awesome and crazy at the same time Tyler you're gonna take you're gonna work five or you're gonna do five straight days of fishing and canoeing have you ever seen the movie whitewater summer it's gonna be just like that it's gonna be just like whitewater summer Kevin Bacon will be there is there isn't there like a group of them that go though mm-hmm. it's, it's 125 just, miles it's like a, just it's, going to be Tyler and you're gonna try to do I'm just telling you 25 miles a day is a lot a hundred. It's hundred and twenty-five miles. So twenty-five miles a day is a lot. That's five days. You wouldn't fish. You'd be constantly canoeing, wouldn't you? No, I think like uh, depends on how fast the water. Yeah, is there's yeah. there's spots in there that I think like you you're you'll just shoot down and then like I guess at five miles an hour. Like if you were canoeing at five miles an hour, that's five hours of canoeing and three hours of fishing on eight hours. Yeah, right. And then you have to set up camp so that you know that's a little while. Yeah, you'd have, you'd have so to. So, how are you getting back? Well, I mean, once you get to Osage Beach, walking. you just have somebody meet you. He's not walking back. <laughs> I mean, it's not like I mean, we're talking like you know, driving. I can literally get to like the drop off point, and someone could drive to where they're picking us up at, and it'd only take them about an hour and a half. Okay, that's true. Okay. But it's going to take us six days because we're going to go. Did you say we're going to go way around? Wait a minute! Wait way. a minute! Wait a minute! You said us. Like, Am I going? Oh, no, Grayson said he might oh, go. Grayson, so. Grayson he said go. he was interested in that. Oh, okay. You're more than welcome to go as well. But uh, just know that it was going to take like six days and we'll be like, we'll be on a raft and we'll be rafting. And Is it a canoe or a raft? Because I like rafts. I like rafts. I, I think raft would be better for the camping gear. I'd rather do a canoe. But, uh, um, Damn see, it, Grayson. See, I think like you, like if some, if there's one raft. I could do a kayak if. Yes. I, I yeah. Really, everybody else could take kayaks if they wanted. And like, yeah, isn't there like a different speed for those though? Like when the raft, you're like, well, <laughs> we, we kayaked back here. Brandon I, and the raft's like I'll four also, miles back. I'm also gonna, <laughs> they, they I'm also gonna throw this slower. out there too. I'm not opposed to like using like a trolling motor. And like you know, like okay, that that like, is like I'm just so like much, I just like so, I just want to start no. at the beginning of the Niangua and just go to you the end. Started like we're doing something special. This and I mean I still already, think it's special. <laughs> I'm just I still I, motor. <laughs> I still wonder how many people has ever done that. How many people has ever started at the beginning of the Niangua and went all the way to the Osage Beach? I'm gonna look okay. up pictures from one. Just so we're clear, we're we're gonna we're gonna live stream. Like not the whole trip, but we we if I was to do this, this would be one of those things where, like, there'd be like a five video like yeah, I'd probably YouTube it. Like, yeah, I'd probably like try to. Oh, this YouTube, is great. Do a YouTube. This is this thing is on it. This is perfect. It's something that I've been wanting to do. I and then the whole time I just want to fly fish for smallmouth. And honestly, I was planning on it. It could take like I told Grayson, it could take us ten days, right? And like to do because like I mean, I want to stop and actually do some fishing and like I don't you know be in a rush. like yeah oh. I don't want to be in a I rush either. Like well, I can't I can't take ten days off so. of work. Day I was I was like, like I would like a week is one thing, but I can't take ten days off work. So that I guess is true. I'm, I guess I'm not invited. I mean, you know, hey, you never know. By then, I was gonna this invite... is next year, like next January or next July, oh, August. Shit, January. <laughs> no, that'd be too damn cold. You ain't see getting my ass out there in the night with no, January. That sounds like terrible. I'll idea. be in a tree hunting deer but the uh uh but yeah like it'll be in like july august so like who knows you might have 10 days never know i uh, maybe 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 we just plan for a week never know i'd be okay with that i would be okay taking a week of but vacation it's like i also it's also like i told grayson like you could come with us and do a couple days and there's so many points on that river right. that if you ever wanted to get off you can just be like hey i think i am going to go ahead and get off over here 
like call bam, an Uber. done. Let's, let's like you can call can, an Uber, come maybe back. We, maybe this can be the have the, somebody pick you up. Like no big deal. The critically unacclaimed fishing trip, and we mm-hmm. can invite other unacclaimers to also come. Maybe it could just be a group of like eight of us. Um, you guys are more than welcome. But, oh, uh, oh. Uh, not not going to be joining watch like, my party. Oh, not going to be so. joining your party. You can do your. Will you thing. be there to at least sign autographs? The, and, sure, sure, sure. If if you see us on the river, we'll give out an autograph. Yeah, they, we'll take some pictures. <laughs> Only one. Second one's five dollars. Guys, go. um, that is awesome. I'm I'm glad that you had a great fishing trip with your brother. I'm glad that you have aspirations of a very long and and studious uh, fishing trip coming next year. Uh, this is this is awesome. Also, also glad you found something, man. And you're getting out. That's great. It's way better than magic. I Fresh was obsessed air, with yeah. magic for a while, and yeah. I think that this is way better. So, hey, is I, it is it really better than magic? Um, yeah, I I like it. I I've dude, I used to love this show. This is what I did when I was younger. I used to sit around just tie flies and like watch TV, and like because uh, I, I I don't know. It's just like I always was doing something, you know, as a farm kid. So it's like I was always doing shit outside. So if I wasn't, you know, working or something like that, I was usually, um, especially after I quit playing sports, like that's, I just did hunting and fishing shit. So, right. Well, awesome. Awesome. So since you've graduated from, from magic and, and gotten more outdoorsy and, and whatnot, Let's, uh, Magic is still fun though. Still like, yeah, it. no, absolutely. Let's We're, get into some geek shit. He's not a nerd anymore. Let's get no. He is a nerd, and I can prove it. Let's get into the geek shit. Hit it. Geeky. I, I'm fucking like, geek. geek. Exactly. Like All right. Fucking geek. Let's see it. Just so you nerds are aware. Weekend geek. All right, guys. It's the weekend geek. And we've got a pretty decent episode for you. Uh, the uh, three things that we're going to talk about, or I guess there's two things we're going to talk about. The one's the Marvel <laughs> What If show that's about to launch on Wednesday on Disney Plus, and then Tyler and Grayson watch the new Suicide Squad movie DC on HBO Max. Uh, I did not do my homework and did not watch this movie. I, I should have texted you because I, but I just assumed that you knew. I did and that not you'd watch know. it. I, if I'd have known, I definitely should have come by it. and yeah. watched it on Friday. We watched it Friday night. It's very, very upsetting. Thursday very upsetting. Night. Uh, but you know, what if, what if you would have called me? What would have been different? There's a branching timeline. There's a there. branching yeah. timeline. Yeah. So uh, the big news coming from What If, uh, we were already kind of excited. Anytime that there's Marvel comment, content that's coming out, like we get excited. But this is canon, first of all. Even though it's animated, it is canon. It's oh, right. canon in the MCU. And the other thing is, is this is basically, uh, and this was written this way, it was announced, it's basically a spinoff of Loki. Like it's the it's a, it is a it's like a continuation. All of the right. what ifs are different universes inside these these branching timelines at the end of Loki. Yeah, which I think is awesome that they're tying it all back. I think it's I think it's fantastic. The trailers are great. They're a little crazy. Uh, you've got uh, Black Panther that's actually Starhawk. Starhawk. No, Star Lord. Star Lord. Starhawk is a completely different comic book character. Uh, that's Darkhawk. You've got Agent Carter that's now Captain Carter. And it looks like Iron or uh, Captain America Steve Rogers is hanging out in like an old school Iron Man suit. Hmm. So now, that's I'm pretty crazy. Hearing that it's in canon has kind of made me more motivated to watch it. Yeah, so no, you, you weren't really interested. I wasn't into it. And, and also, it, they've done a lot more work on it. I, I, I don't see that today. too. I don't think... I, I, th- I think they're going to go about and talk about some of these branching timelines throughout the Marvel cinematic like movie don't. universe. I don't think though. No, I, I think they are. I I, 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 well, one of <laughs> Dr. Strange movie is literally called the multiverse of madness. And they like Toby McGuire and Andrew Garfield is going to be in the spider yeah. in the Spider-Man movie. So, so they're going to talk a little bit about it. But this is going to go in depth in like origin stories of the branches, and I think that's cool. I see. I don't think so. I don't. I think that the way that this is going to work is the only character that I think has a chance to ever show up in the MCU is the uh, Peggy Carter Captain Britain. Yeah. No. Oh no. 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 I'm sorry. I I I think I may have miscommunicated my point. 
I don't expect them to take anything that happens in What If and put it on the big okay. screen. I think that this is a really colorful and fun way for them to show us mm-hmm. what some of these other universes yes. look like. Okay, because yes. I don't think they're going to do a lot of that. No, in the in the in the actual movies, there's going to be hints of it. Right, the multiverse of madness is probably going to be the biggest. Uh, so, one. like the different universe. Y- yes, okay. and you're going to see yes. a couple different Spider Mans or what have you. Like we don't really know everything that we're going to see, but this is a fun way. So that instead of us going, hey, wouldn't it be cool if like no, they're yeah. actually going to go, nah, we're going to show you. This is one hundred percent like, like just 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 lip service. Like yeah, for them to say we'll that it's canon, to talk I think that they're more just like, hey, it's connected. You got to watch. And even though that it's going to be very, this is going to be the most, the thing that's like going to be the most, like super loosely connected. It's like, canon in the sense that there are branching timelines and these are some of those yes, branching that's timelines. It. That's like, and I don't think that a lot of it's going to be mentioned again. Um, the one that I could see showing up is Peggy Carter, just because I think that she's got to deal with Marvel. Disney seems to really like her. I could see maybe a live action show or something of that. I maybe think some of the out. other characters might have, might, might have the potential to show See, up. I don't think they, so because like for one, Chad McBoseman is in like four episodes of yeah. this. So it's just like, which, which, no, which yeah, was he, a, which is a big, don't bury the lead there. Like this is the last time that we're going to see Chad it is. or hear. So Chad like, Wick what are they going to do with that character? Yeah. Probably not much. Yeah. So we're not going to see that one, obviously, but like Killmonger could, could maybe, could there, show that's, a good, there that's a good is, point. Yeah. Because he's a hell of an actor. Yeah. Right. He, and that's, Michael Jordan is and, a hell of an actor. And people really loved his character. I also think they might still have him under contract. I, uh, I'm pretty sure they do. Actually. Yeah. So the, that's why people were really like skeptical that he was actually dead. At yeah, the that's, end of the that's like they're 100% sure that there's going to be a second season. Like it's done. Mm-hmm. Like that's, that's an of, ink deal. Of what if? Yeah. And the oh, reason okay. that I know this is that their, uh, COVID time constraints, this was supposed to be a 10 episode season and they've shortened it down to nine. They had to kick one out and they go, we'll just use it in the second season. Oh, okay. So now instead of 10 and eight, we're going to get nine and nine. And that was released this oh, week. Okay. So, That's uh, cool. so like, yeah, no, no spoilers at the end of the last episode saying CN season two. I'm spoiling it first here on critically unacclaimed <laughs> week in geek. That's and pretty interesting. I got it from den of geek who probably got it from somebody blended else. massacre blended, whatever. <laughs> who, who <And> knows? <laughs> But uh, but that's interesting. I hadn't heard that, so that's really cool, actually. Yeah, like, no. So so this one's nine. There's nine. There's episodes. There's nine episodes. There were supposed to be ten. They moved one over to the second season. So I know that Grayson was. Uh, you kind of didn't really like the art, but I told you to kind of rewatch that trailer. We watched it, and you like because it does look like they've updated the art on it a little bit. It looks a little bit like cleaner. It looks a little crisper. Yeah. I don't. Maybe they it was just like in, some uh, low res trailers that I watched before. I don't know. But they've added in highlights and low and uh, shadows to the animation, whereas previously it was all really flat looking. And it looks really bright, and now it looks more right. defined. It so, looks more Americanized mm-hmm. as the art style. And, and even now, that's really a, cool. There's a few shots still left that I wonder if they're going to work on. There's that shot of Thor that he just looks super airbrushed. It's just like a flat face. Oh, yeah. Thing. There's only like four actors that didn't sign up for this, too. Oh, wow. Yeah, like, most of them like are in Robert it. Downey Jr.'s not in it. Scarlett Johansson's oh, not in I it. I heard Robert Downey Jr. was in no, it. No, he's not in it. And uh, Chris Evans, Scarlett Johansson, and a fourth that I can't think of All off the top of, of my head. No oh yeah, contract. but but the, but but like, uh, I, I actually think Chris Hemsworth is in this. Yes, Chadwick he is. Boseman signed. Up. Boseman's in it. Uh, Hemsworth's in it. Uh, I'm pretty sure Chris that, Pratt uh, in the Tom Hiddleston. Tom Hiddleston. is in it. Yondu. Yondu's in it. Yeah, no, but they they uh, had they had Rucker. a lot of they had a lot of actors. Uh, Peggy Carter is voiced by By, the uh, actress that plays Peggy Carter. What's her name? I can't think of her name right now, but yeah, um, something. Either way, they're in. So, uh, so it's not like this is going to be some cartoon where you don't recognize the like. You're going to recognize the voice. Like this is going to be. This I'm is going to be fun to watch. I'm, I'm interested. The Killmonger uh, Tony Stark scene seems pretty interesting. That that kind of that seems kind of cool. The uh, Captain Carter stuff seems kind of cool. You know, you were talking about the Captain America being in an Iron Man suit. Yeah. I wonder if all that ain't from the same time like line, like Captain Carter, like uh, um, where Steve yeah, Rogers no, is. is actually the Iron yeah, Man. Yeah, in the trailer it shows as much like, that they're they're like hanging out. It's like, oh, it's my buddy Steve, and Steve's in this like Mark Iron Man. One Iron Man suit. It was probably invaded by Howard. Yeah, no, that's exactly yeah. what I was thinking. Yeah. So uh, that's no, pretty cool. 
It, it is. It is. So I'm, I'm very excited about what if, and that starts on Wednesday, August 11th. Nice. Am I right on that? Yes. You. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Wednesday, August 11th, it'll go live on Disney+. Plus. I will watch it on the very first day that it comes out as to not have what's about to happen. So uh, um, real quick on that, did you see the article that I shared in the Discord about Taskmaster? Oh, I did. I did. I hope. I wonder, like, what if they're gonna do with the uh, if they could do something to fix Taskmaster. Anyway, the article basically said that I wasn't the only one who was outraged by the way they did Taskmaster. <laughs> outraged and, is such a strong word and, uh, for this, but yes, yes, I was outraged. You were and, so mad, and uh, that they the way they did Taskmaster in the Black Widow movie, and that there's uh, and I guess they said Marvel confirmed. Um, what which one was this here? Let's see, confirm. Just going back. Hold on one second. I'm trying to see. I think the it's we got this covered. dot com. So do, like, but do I don't you, know how I found this article. Do you really think they're gonna do that? Because like people complained about uh, the Mandarin, and now almost 15 years later, we get. Hey, we get I, I still think that you could get like 10 years later, maybe a Taskmaster who's actually the real Taskmaster. I could also see uh, Taskmaster showing up as the main bad in someone else's story. I uh yes I could too or I could see somebody maybe like you know they kill this girl and they steal her suit and technology and they put it into a super soldier and then now that that now that super soldier has got the Taskmaster technology like Black Panther would be a pretty good like bad oh yeah that would be a good bad guy for Black Panther um but Taskmaster would also be good for in the you know they're doing the Hawkeye show and that's obviously going to be a uh. Would be uh, a Black boring. Widow Hawkeye show where Black Widow versus though. Hawkeye. That's going to be awesome. I'm about to drop something. Taskmaster is going to be the main antagonist in the Captain America and Winter Soldier. Oh, the movie? Yep, that's it. That's it. I'm dropping it. That, would be, that is happening. See, Taskmaster be versus ass. Captain America is what we want to see. That would be sick. Like that. That's the ideal. Like, yeah, ideal I want to see that team up fight with Bucky and... And uh, Falcon can, against Taskmaster, that'd be sick. Can we do and the real Taskmaster, like a super soldier who got the like who who killed this stupid chick and put her out of her misery and stole the technology and is like copying everybody's moves and stuff? That would be sick. But uh, also, they never really called her Taskmaster. Anyways, they just said it was like a Taskmaster initiative. It's the Taskmaster program. program yeah, they just so added. stupid. So like, they can literally just retcon everything. Like, it really doesn't. Oh, matter like at oh, they all. call it the Taskmaster yeah, program. Yeah, because but this they, person's named this Taskmaster. other guy yeah. was named Taskmaster. Yeah, that's. I mean, yeah. it's not. It's not super crazy that's to true. think. That's very. It's true. like the Deadpool initiative versus. Yeah, you Deadpool. Know, Deadpool. Yeah. Which is two very different Ryan Reynolds. It yes. could even be the same. It could be a girl. I don't give a shit if Taskmaster's a girl. Like, it I could don't be there. It could be that girl. Make it cool. She could become Taskmaster. Task, Taskmaster's actually cool, though. So, like. Like, make. Okay. I'm on team make Taskmaster yeah. cool. So, thank you. Make, it, make her cool. Bucky Not and. stupid. <laughs> so, let's, uh, let's, like, speculate in the Marvel Cinematic Universe for a second. And, you know, they're doing King the Conqueror. Yeah. Right? We all know this. Yeah. I feel like we're missing something with this whole thing. And I think that it's a Doctor Doom. I think that Doctor Doom is going to play some kind of role in all this. Because... Not Hydra? No. Oh, my God. (laughs) You don't think it's Hydra? Hold on. (laughs) I didn't say that. (laughs) Hydra's still a big part of whatever's going on in Captain America's thing. So... Like his side story and what's going on there, Hydra's still a big part in that. I don't think that that's going to be the over well, uh, arcing thing, but like Hydra is Captain America's big bad in the cinematic universe. It has been since the first one, second one, third one, and continuing on even in the show. I think that Hydra is going to have a big part of it. I think we're going to find out that Hydra is uh, part of this whole thing in there. But well, anyway, but Doctor Doom. The reason I'm saying this is. Is I just don't think that Kang is a big enough bad guy. Like I think he's like I think he like you just come from Thanos, right? K- Kang is considerably a bigger bad than Thanos. I don't think he is. I think Thanos was a bigger bad than 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 Kang. I think the Infinity what like what Thanos did with the Infinity Gauntlet is way worse than anything that Kang can do. Kang Kang's truly just a dude, right? He's just a dude. He's just a dude. And like and so like they they he's been defeated several times. 
It's not really that big a deal. Thanos is always a much bigger problem. And um, it, it could either it could either be... How is Doom a bigger bad guy than Kang, though? I just So can't. in the comic book, what everybody don't realize, like if you've only watched... Like these stupid fucking movies they made of the Fantastic Four. Or the cartoons. Doctor Doom is kind of a pussy. And uh, in, in comic books, in real life... <laughs> I was waiting on it. In real comic, life... Co- IRL is comic books. Doctor, Go on. Doctor Doom is like, he could have been the Sorcerer Supreme. Like, he's a bad motherfucker. And so, like, he runs this whole country. He's like a president of a whole country. Moldova? Uh, uh, Lith- uh, Lithuania, I think, or the uh, Liechtenstein. It's like Lithuania. I don't think it's a real country. Lithuania is no, a real Lithuania country. Lithuania is a real country. We <laughs> apologize to Lithuania. Uh, just so we're clear, that's the that's the title for this episode. It starts with an L. We apologize to Lithuania. <laughs> we, we sincerely apologize to the people of Lithuania. That we sincerely <laughs> apologize to, to the, the people, people of Lithuania. Lithuania. Why did we have to apologize to Lithuania twice in one episode? Because we. Latvira, 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 Latvia, Latvira, 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 L A T L A T V E V E R I A, Latvira, Latvira. That's Latveria. not a real place, but yes, he's in charge of his own country. Yeah, Latvira. That's not Lithuania. It's not or Lithuania. Latvia or Lithu- Liberia. Where is Lithuania? Is that Africa? Oh, no, dear Lord. Europe. Is it Europe? Yeah. No, no we got to get off, man. There Gosh. is a Lithuanian just we, we deep, ready. We, we are ready. super. They're lawyering up. Super sorry. <laughs> and we deeply apologize to Lithuania. Okay. So anyways, you, you really want Dr. Doom. And I'm saying that. I just think that like that would be a good way. Like you could almost have, I guess, King... The pro- the thing that would happen is like Doom would be like like sneaking his way in. Like what I could see is maybe them like trying to go to Doom for help. King the Conqueror. And then and then Doom like fucking everybody. Is in charge of the TVA. In one universe, I don't know how that I don't know how all that's going to work. He's coming. The multiverse is such a fucked up thing like I hope they don't fuck it up. They could fuck this up with the multiverse if they ain't careful. And and I'm hoping that they they maybe squash it kind of like you know have the multiverse going for a minute, do what they're wanting to do, and like it not actually this Kang thing would only be like a like a four or five run thing. I don't think they're going to wait as long as what they did with Thanos to come to a climax with this. So just just so you know, like I see this, like I hear you, but damn it, Tyler! God damn it! Why'd you say something, Grayson? The <laughs> So the very first Avengers movie was an origin story for the Avengers. Yes. Okay. And then there was Ultron. Yeah. And Ultron was this like ultra powerful, like omnipresent force, like a force that you're like, how are they going to stop this guy? Right. You're like he's everywhere. He's in the internet. And uh, just, just, just a like ridiculously powerful, like OP bad guy. Right. Okay. And then right after that was Civil War. Who was the bad guy in Civil War? Oh, our friend Zemo. Zemo, yeah. yeah. Who proved that, like, all you have to do, like, is just be super smart. Well, the, and, and, the bad and, guy there was technically it was Zemo. Yeah, but they were kind of fighting each other. Yeah, right? exactly. Like it was the government, but he was the he, they he were pawns, man, and, and, and and he was the yeah. chess master, and he he was putting his pieces exactly where he needed to be for mm-hmm. them to destroy themselves. Okay, so then you have origin stories which is the movies that we're going on right now right what happened to zemo at the end of falcon and winter soldier oh he got sent to the raft right yeah that's right so no, the uh wakanda came and picked him up yeah oh he went no yeah but they were taking him to the raft that's yeah what they said. Yeah, yeah oh yeah. yeah so now so follow my logic here we're doing some origin stories we're right now, like we're doing the Eternals and Shang Chi yeah. and, and 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 all of these origin stories and these shows, and we're developing a universe with well, Loki, and 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 so we've that got is a we've, good point. We've got this massive, we've got these massive origin stories, and then there's King the Conqueror. Well, and also which is the which, King the King the Conqueror storyline is kind of being played out in the movies that are not introductions. But there but what I'm saying is this Thanos was this like huge, like overpowerful, like OP, like how yeah. are they gonna defeat King's just a guy. 
But they've done this before. Like, the story arc has already been done. Yeah. He is going to put them in a position where they're going to lose. Yeah. Like, he, like, and he knows more than Zemo knows. Like, Zemo's just smart. This guy's, like, knows that's everything that's happened and is going to happen. So, maybe they'll, maybe Doctor Doom is next. Maybe he's the next thing. I, I think you're not going to see Doctor Doom until Fantastic Four. I really well, just I, don't. See, well, yeah, I think we not. will. I think we'll get introductions to Doom and to the Fantastic Four before the Fantastic Four movie goes out. Kind of like what they did with Spider-Man. The only way that we see Doctor Doom before Fantastic Four is maybe like an after credit scenes that, or something yes. that hints at him. Yeah. He's not going to show up till no, Fantastic No, like I think that there's a possibility like, or a you mention know. mention of gotta, Latvira. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what I'm saying. Like there's a possibility they end up in one of these other countries like maybe even in the doctor like think about even doctor strange like there's a good possibility they have to go there because of his connection with you know if he's a sorcerer if he's going to be like you know faithful to the comics and be a sorcerer they might need his help with something he may have an artifact of some sort like there's several different ways they, they could that's so much him so in. Many oh, big i don't think it's that big i don't I, I, the, the way that How they, they introduce, do galactus the way they introduce characters is crazy See, Galactus has to be like the big bad for something bigger. Right? Yeah, like uh, like the next big phase like, or what have you. They they have to bring have in Fantastic to. Four before they bring in Galactus. I read somewhere that they were uh, maybe it was a YouTube video I watched that the Eternals were going to introduce the mutants. Okay, and uh, and I thought that was kind of interesting. The Eternals, yeah, I watched that. Did you, was it a chronological like a family tree maybe, of where they all yeah. came from? The celestials yeah. that were created by somebody else. Yeah, no, I saw that that YouTube video and as the, well. There's a uh, also another thing too, where the Cest- celestials created the internals. Yes, and they created uh, see the uh, uh, they created these other things called deviants that are like the bad that's what Thanos eternals is. and the the uh, uh, Thanos is a, a eternal that has a deviant gene, mm-hmm. and that's what made him all purple and stuff. But like his his brothers and stuff like that are that, all. But they but that was in the comics. They've completely wrecked on that because he's from a world now. Titan, and when yeah. that's where the Eternals. But are Titan from. was a moon of Saturn, Saturn in the comics. No, it's a moon of Jupiter in real oh, okay. life, and that's exactly where it is here. In like, Jupiter, yes, on Jupiter. That's where the that's where the Eternals are from. That's where they came from. Was Titan. Like the Eternals. Titan's a planet that's like not in our solar system no. in the MCU. No, Titan okay. is to totally be, the moon. I'm gonna Jupiter. once again. We're I, this is not one of those uh, episodes where I'm going to antagonize yeah. you and poke you with a stick. So I'm going to give you that. Okay. No, it's still the same place. If it you is, know that I'm right, it's supposed to be in our solar system. Yeah, that's, comment. That's why com- they were able com- to make it so. Put quickly. your comment in the comment section. That's why they were able to make it so quickly. So. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sure. Uh, yes, they're going to be the Eternals. Is, I think the Eternals is going to clear up a lot. I think so, too. I'm I think really, it's gonna, I think it's gonna, really excited I think it's gonna for that movie. it's going to flush out the story. Yeah, it's going to flush really out the, the world, what too. what we're going to be doing yeah, it, for, uh, for the next 10 years of also, our lives. Also, uh, Shang-Chi, mm-hmm. which is the next movie, right? right? Like, it comes out in September. And, like, September 3rd or, or 11th or something. I origin remember. story one-off. I, I, I really think that. I don't. I think that this is going to have... I think that they're going to talk about some shit in this one. Like, it's going to set up some uh, some things, too. Especially with, like, the... Uh, this phase, this phase's version of Thor 1. Like, no. Yep. I don't, I don't It's going to introduce so. a character. I don't think so. I think it's going to have, like, some kind of purpose with that... Because they're real mystical. I think that this is going to tie in to Doctor Strange. We're we'll usually to, so much we'll on the same one. page, and me and you are just, like, at odds well, about everything so today. I think, I think that, like, the the mystical stuff is all going to tie in together. Oh, yeah, okay. And then, like, the where Kane, uh, Kang is going to tie all of it together because he's going to tie in the uh, science stuff um, with, with in, the, in the real life stuff, kind of the Captain America and all that, and the Ant-Man... He's gonna tie that in with the with the mystical stuff with uh, Scarlet Witch, mm-hmm. Shang Chi, and Doctor Strange, we, we and have, then Spider Man. I think it could be the one that's actually more on its own and independent. But uh, but Doctor Strange might tie that together. I'm not entirely sure. We have seen that Wang is gonna be in Shang Chi and yes. Abomination. So. Wang and Abomination is gonna be in Shang Chi. So I think oh, the Abomination is gonna be in Shang Chi. I yeah. knew he was gonna be. In, I thought he was gonna be in She Hulk. No, he's he fights Wang. Or uh, is it Wang or Wong? Wong. Wong. He fights Wong in uh, in in the in this cage match, in the in uh, in this trailer for Shang Chi. Wong, the FBI agent. No, Wong is the uh, um, uh, oh, Doctor Strange's Doctor mystical buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's part. Wong versus the 
Abomination. It's pre- it, lo- it seems pretty dope. And that does sound cool. You definitely I also, want to see that I, movie I just now. have like a really soft spot for Tim Roth, too. I really like Tim I Roth. I think it's Tim Roth, It's too? supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. Tim Roth is, is He's great. signed on for, I, I, for I this. I love Tim Roth. She-Hulk. I love him in Reservoir Dogs. Uh, he was in a show called Lie to Me, and that is on Netflix. Oh, you guys I've should heard totally awesome. stream it. Yeah, it's fantastic. I've heard that's really good. I really I don't know why I got canceled to be honest yeah, with you. I, Ross, I just love else? it. Tim Roth. He's is done another great. movie that I really liked. The, uh what, what is the fucking name of that movie? Four Rooms. Well, there's Four Rooms, yes. Tim Roth's just Well, great. he was in a lot of Tarantino shit. So yes. like I mean, hell, that may, that's probably what it is, honestly. He was in what wasn't he in uh Reservoir Dogs. In Hateful Eight. Yep. yep, he was the he was the uh, he was one of the bad guys yeah. in that. Like, so it's just yeah, Tim Roth's great. So I'm 100 percent okay with him coming back and being the abomination and the and, Hulk and 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 yeah. just great. Yes. So uh, we're we're at odds about almost everything though, except for Tim Roth. I don't know. It's Tim just, Roth really brought us together. So let's see if we're at odds with this. Uh-huh. Suicide Squad was a good movie. Um, Suicide Squad was one of the better DC movies that they've come out oh, with. Oh, I'm glad we're in agreement. Of course, if you guys were listening you about didn't watch 34 it. minutes ago, <laughs> I, I was just taking a stab. No. <laughs> I, haven't, but, uh, I haven't seen the movie. Guys, so let I, me set the p- tone for you, okay? Okay. It's not... Do you remember the first Suicide Squad movie? And Grayson, correct me if I'm wrong on this, if you feel differently. Right on. It just like... It felt like a cookie cutter type of movie that was just like... You know, like it, it had a storyline. It was just basic carbon copy of just any other kind of movie. The four, first Suicide Squad seemed like three different people tried to make a movie. It, it seemed and a lot like the like, like the the Whedon. It seemed like the Whedon fucking thing, mm-hmm. right? This one felt like it had its own artist artistic idea. Absolutely, it had its own storytelling mm-hmm. idea, and it was awesome. And the of amount fun. of people that they killed in this movie was fantastic. <laughs> I I should have expected that. Like, I don't know why I didn't expect more people to die. I don't know why. I, and I, it jumped straight into it. it, it did it not seem not in the first one that they could only kill monsters and not people? Kind of. And in this one, like, Harley Quinn is, like, straight up, like... Like fucking executing people, <laughs> right? Like, you know, like it's no it, fucking big it, deal. It was a lot more irreverent. Like, oh yeah, it very more R rated, um, mm-hmm. way more hardcore than what the like, what the other one is. Uh, so. The one sequence when they go to save Flag, like that was just completely brutal. Oh, dude, so and, funny! And, like I, so funny. And like, then watching they, through, I'm like, okay, I kind of expect when they when, expect the bit that they ended up showing. But when man. they go to save Harley, that was even better. And like that that line that she has, she's like, she's like, you guys really mean it? And yeah, it was a good plan too. Like, well, I'll go back, and I'll you guys can try there. it again. You guys could go ahead and do it. I'll go back in there. Like that Some was of the so best funny. Gore that I've seen. And. Uh, Margot Robbie best performance is yeah, Harley Quinn. She, she did a great job. Like she's done it. How many times has she done it now? We were just figuring this. The third this. time. I th- is it the third? It was Birds of Prey. There. No, I think First it's Suicide Squad. There's Suicide Squad. There's. Uh, uh, okay, I guess it was. There's Birds of Prey, mm-hmm. and, and then, then this, this one. one? Yeah. I thought she was in another one. Uh, yeah, I don't think that she was in. Was she in Batman? Like briefly. Batman v Superman was she in the very beginning? No, or she gets punched in the teeth by Batman. I, I hate to chime in squad. on something that I don't want to hear the spoilers, and I'm just setting up for the next uh, thing. But uh, she got, she just gets mentioned in the Snyder cut. She gets Maybe mentioned that Batman fucking kills her. Oh um, yeah, but she's not actually in right. that that movie. Maybe I, that's, I really I truly think I this is the third more. time that Margot Ro- Robbie has reprised her role as Harley Quinn. Nice. My only complaint with it is I wish they wouldn't have star- showed Starro in the trailer. Cause I, that does suck, because he was a really cool part of the I, whole thing. I felt thing, like that so. would have been a much more... F- it didn't ruin anything knowing that that's what the big reveal was going to be, but it would have been a lot more fun that, if you did not expect that. Like that, The first time you see it on screen... E- e- the first time you see it on screen isn't when it breaks out. I still think that would have been really, really interesting. I thought the thinker was an interesting character as well. I liked. 
See, the thinker was in the uh, um, the Flash on DC, mm-hmm. and he was way more badass on that, like oh, uh, like as a villain than what he was on this. But I thought he was more comic book accurate in this, and I really liked him better. Right in this, I thought he was really funny, and uh, uh, he seemed like you know somebody who would be somebody called the thinker. Right. Um, the star of this movie though was definitely uh, who sold the show was the polka dot man. Right. He was a lot of fun. He was awesome. He was the best version of all of it, but. Um, what did you think of, uh, oh, I just lost it. Oh, uh, we were talking about this earlier. It was so, like you were talking about it having a very unique style. It's very much a James Gunn movie. Very like, much. You, but that was the best part about it. You could. It was almost like a Guy Ritchie movie in mm-hmm. the sense of the way that it was shot. It was the very edits, stylized. And the, the way that they would do one spot and then they reverse it and go back and tell a whole we different also, point. The editing was really interesting. Awesome. Just because... It starts you off in the middle of the story, which you would very much assume everything you've seen in the trailer you see in the first, like, five, six minutes, probably. Easily, yeah. And then it kind of jumps back in time to show you the beginning of the story, and I really I, appreciated that. I did as well. And uh, the other thing uh, that I wanted to mention was Ilgis Alba as uh, Dead Sport, uh, or Bloodsport. Blood Sport was uh, awesome. Right. Like, also I mean, John Cena was another great, awesome. Great he character. was a uh, peacemaker is yeah. his uh, superior name. And like, and uh, it, fantastic. Like, I mean, Cena is, I mean, Cena is going to be the next rock. Yeah. He's just like, he's, he's, he's entertaining to watch. Entertaining as fuck. He's a decent actor too. Mm-hmm. That's the other thing. I'd like, to, like the, I've, I've seen a, not a ton of his range, but the characters I've seen him are this one. And then like in, uh, was he in the Zac Efron Neighbors movie? Yeah, uh, or something. I don't remember. Similar I don't know if I've that, seen where that he's one. kind of like a, a jockey bro type. Mm. And again, like he does those characters well. I'd like to see some more range out of him. But I think he did uh, Peacemaker superbly. He like, did it awesome. Lots and lots of fun. And it it seems like that he's going to have a show. Okay. Because again, on, yeah, there yeah. was some after credit scenes. Stick around. But uh, so uh, yeah, it, very interesting stuff. But, uh, but I don't want to spoil it anymore for Brandon. That last little bit may have been too much. But uh, The shark was awesome, so. too. I have oh. been trained to completely ignore you guys. King, King, I uh, haven't listened to a word you've said. King, King Shark was hilarious. Right. He was like the comic relief of the whole thing. Voiced by and, Sylvester Stallone. Was I was wondering yeah. who did that. And then but, uh, Taika Waititi is also in it as the first rat catcher. Yeah, he's the rat catcher. He's good. rat catcher one. And uh, I, it was so funny. The uh, uh, nom nom <laughs> nom right. noms. Oh man, he King Shark had some of the best gore scenes. Oh, it was so funny, dude! Like the King Shark was hilarious. Like, and he made that movie, and I'm super ha- happy that he was in it. The CGI for him was a little weak. There were a few scenes I thought but, this one they just said it's good enough, get yeah, it out. But it's but it's still I liked his but character enough. The, I thought it was cool. the scenes that it was great. It was superb. Like yeah. uh, when he gets shot a bunch of times. Like, Pretty that awesome. Was really yeah. really awesome. All right. Well, that's uh, that's that. So uh, you'll have to get back with us next week. For, yeah. Uh, let a, us a know your review. follow up. We'll do a spoiler review next week after Brandon sees it. So I'm going to watch it tonight. Yes, he's he's excited about it. He's Very like he excited. almost want to just go home, and be like, "Well, you guys can do the pod. I'm just going to go home and watch this now that I know it's out." <laughs> does, does anybody have any final thoughts? But Brandon's final thought. That's a that's a terrible lack. Uh, so we decided we were going to finish off the podcast from now on with final thoughts. And so, uh, we're not going to take turns or anything. Some of us will have multiple final thoughts or we'll like three of us, but for right now, I guess the soapbox is on me, It is, which I'm 100% okay with. Uh, so this final thought is about doing your own research. Uh, we hear this all the time in the world of coronavirus where I'm going to do my own research. And, or we get figureheads and politicians that say, I've done my, my own research, or they tell their constituents to do their own research. And the problem uh, with that is that none of you are scientists. I can almost assuredly say that no one listening to me right now is a scientist. Uh, every science in itself it thrives with failure. Uh, 99.9% of scientific achievements uh, got to that achievement through many, many, many trials and errors and much, 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 much failure. However, we live in an internet world and that internet world lets you post 
all of your trials, all of your errors, all of the experiments that you put out, all the research papers that anyone wants to gets to be put online. You can find truth to any outlandish scientific theory if you just search hard enough on the internet. The problem with most of the layman people, myself included, doing their own research is that you absolutely do not know what to look for and don't know what you're reading. Uh, case in point, the, the person that started this non-vaccine or anti-vaxxers that came long before the coronavirus was based on a scientific uh, set of experiments that have been completely debunked by the entire scientific community. Uh, the, the researcher that put those uh, papers out and the research out has been stripped of, of most of his accreditations and yet it hit the mainstream. And now we have a large population that doesn't believe in vaccines, doesn't trust vaccines, people that are not getting the COVID vaccine. And at this point in Missouri, if you're listening to us, uh, that's most of us. Uh, are not getting the vaccine for a ver variety of reasons. But one of the larger ones is that they don't trust the establishment and they don't trust science. So they get chose to do their own research. Well, I'll tell you right now, the first thing, if you're going to do your own research, is not Google, why should I not take the vaccine? Let's be honest. If you didn't get the vaccine, there's a 90% chance that you're conservative. You get your news from Fox News. I'm not here to talk bad about Fox News, but the fact of the matter is, is those figureheads make a lot of money being the counterpoint to the people that are trying to get you the vaccines, the scientists, the medical community. Uh, so if you spend a lot of time on your phone on Fox News, whenever you Google, why should I not take the vaccine? You're going to see a laundry list of research that explains the side effects, that explains the stuff that... Uh, the elite aren't telling you they're going to talk about uh, how Biden and Fauci and are, are, are just trying to tell you what you want to hear and lulling you into like a false sense of hope. Uh, they're going to talk about how there's really no need for a vaccine because COVID's really not that uh, serious. Uh, for those of you that have lost someone from COVID or experienced COVID yourself, you know, that's simply not true. So, as I'm on my soapbox, I just ask that whenever you hear someone say, I'm going to do my own research, talk some sense into them. Listen to the professionals. If you don't trust the establishment, I don't know how to help you. Uh, when I say the establishment, I'm not talking about Biden. I'm not talking about Democrats, Republicans. I'm talking about the scientific established community. These people went to school for eight years and have devoted their life for shit like this. If you hear about side effects from the vaccine, that's going to happen. That's just going to happen. They rushed the scientific process to its capacity so that we could get the vaccines out so that we might be able to save ourselves. As of last week at my job, I am now wearing a mask every day due to the Delta var variant and the spikes in Southwest Missouri. I am wearing a mask because too many of us took our masks off without getting vaccinated and if they weren't going to get that or too many people didn't get vaccinated and everybody decided that the masks were somehow infringing on their personal rights and it caused a bunch of people to get sick and it caused a bunch of deaths. Most people that died, uh, as of right now, 91% of the people that died in my county, uh, were unvaccinated. Uh, yes, you can get coronavirus if you're vaccinated. Um, but almost all accounts state that you will have lesser symptoms and you'll make it through it. If you don't get vaccinated, you have a significant more chance. It's significantly more likely that you'll have a severe case, which can lead to death. So I just ask, and I know I'm, I'm usually jokey and, and I, you know, I'm loud and, and laugh, but, uh, this is the soapbox and it's a very serious message. I just ask all of you, if you have family members that are on the other end, uh, uh, of that, that spectrum and they don't want to get vaccinated, talk some sense into them. Uh, at the end of the day, they're going to do their own research and I'll tell you exactly where that research is going to lead. It's going to lead them to whatever decision they've already made in their heads. And it's only going to take a loving family member that's going to convince them otherwise. And that's my final thought guys. Thanks. 
that was actually really good. Just to add to it, like uh, younger people are uh, getting this virus and it's uh, affecting them. So, uh, you know, no matter your age, like if you're above 12, I think you can get the vaccine. So mm-hmm. uh, if you're, you know, go ahead and get it. But, uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's the show. So uh, like, comment, subscribe, follow us on uh, Critically Unacclaimed on Facebook, at Unacclaimed Pod on Twitter. Critically Unacclaimed TikTok, Critically Unacclaimed uh, Instagram. You can hear us on Facebook. There it is. Straight from the mud like Ruby. Straight to the stage, they love me. I understand they hungry. But please don't hate, that's ugly. I've been sliding, shaking, moving. I've been popping in my city. Shout it, say she love the way we do it. Do it with me. I be too turned up to ever give a fuck. I ain't come to argue, let a nigga fuck. They been talking pennies, I need bigger bucks. About to catch a flight, I need to switch it up. That black boy Joy might do my dance on him Take no disrespect, might put my hands on him Hit this chicken, now she wanna marry me But she gon' need some closure and some therapy Came back to the city with my bank account on F Giving rappers hell, I know they happy that I left Hit the south in winter, I just put down my deposit 82 degrees, I left that jacket in my closet I'm in the mood for a switch up I hit the function, hit the rose right till I hiccup I hit the stage and leave with money that say stick up She picture perfect so I told him I'm a flicker Bill, I'm in the mood for a change up I leave the city and return with my change up They got amnesia, don't remember how they played us They wanna knock me down but somehow I just stay up What's that? What Left out with the who she? Yeah. Laying game like 2D. I've been kicking shit like Bruce Lee. Okay. Margarita to the brim tip. Black yeah. denim need a slim fit. Yeah. Same people that I flex with be the ones that I'm in the gym with. I'm a living legend. You a dead cause and I'm dead ass. No, I'm dead, right? Leave her early, but I'm her night. Long and short to keep the head right. Teed up out in Malibu. Got sand all in my good shoes. Okay. Press a nigga with the pessimism, but I only came for the good news. I am the show that they came for. Hitting the target I aim for. We've been discussing the contract Just tell them they get what they pay for I am not fucking with poverty Really it started to bother me I need the yacht with the property They come with the view that you gotta see Came up from the basement Hit the rooftop with a passion Bad bitch with some good credit And a good sense for the fashion Dope blowing with the left hand Ass gripping with the right hand Uber shell to the airport I'ma hit you back with my flight Bill, I'm in the mood for a switch up. I hit the function Hit the rose right till I hiccup I hit the stage and leave with money that say stick up She picture perfect so I told him I'm a flicker Bill I'm in the mood for a change